Welcome to the PolarX Limited presentation to one-to-one -one Americas online. Uh, PolarX is uh, an ASX listed company. We have projects in uh, Alaska and in Nevada. And the purpose of this brief introduction is just to give you the background on both of those projects. Uh, a little bit of uh, flesh on the bones, if you like, of uh, each one. Uh, and then talk a little bit about our planned programs for the 2021 uh, field season. So as I mentioned, uh, we are an ASX listed company. Um, our core projects until very recently have been the, uh, the Alaska Range Project in uh, Alaska, obviously. That has uh, two components. The, uh, the northern part, Stellar property, which we own 100%. Uh, that includes uh, the small but high grade exactly SCARN, which is open all directions. Uh, and is part of a, uh, a system that's at least three kilometers uh, in length, possibly more. Um, and that's also highly prospective for large scale porphyry copper deposits. Um, and that's been verified by the discovery at our Mars prospect of porphyry star mineralization uh, with over 100 meters cut at 0.22% copper and 0.1 gram per tonne gold. Then we also have the Caribou Dome property in the Alaska range where polar rates can earn up to 90%. Uh, that includes the uh, just under 3 million tonne of 3% uh, uh, caribou dome copper deposit, uh, which has a high grade surface core of approximately 1 million tonnes at 104% uh, copper. Again, that's open in all directions. And then more recently, we've added a project in Nevada uh, called Humboldt Range. Um, that lies very close to two existing gold and silver mines um, and contains and cropping high grade. Uh, quartz veins with gold, silver, uh, and base metals. So I want to tell you a little bit about those. Those before that, obviously, the usual cautionary statements. Uh, there will be some forward-looking statements made in this presentation. So uh, please exercise due care and attention. Uh, and before we get into the detail of the project, just a little bit about uh, the management and the company itself. So key management: uh, we have three executives. Uh, our chairman, uh, Mark Boge and Jack, is a chartered accountant by background. He spent 25 years in the resource sector and has led uh, several successful um, companies through the resource delineation, feasibility, uh, finance, construction and production stages. Uh, and in most cases, those projects have been sold to, uh, to larger companies and significant funds have been returned to investors. Uh, Jason and I, uh, the two technical directors, both have uh, PhD level uh, study backgrounds and both work with large scale companies uh, such as WMZ Resources, uh, Home State Barrack, uh, BHP Billiton, uh, and both of us have subsequently uh, worked in the junior sector. Uh, shares on issue, uh, about 667 million shares, a few management options. Uh, we recently raised uh, $5 million. Um, so after, after costs and some uh, down payments on expenditure for the exploration program this year. We've got uh, just over four and a half million dollars cash on hand um, and a strong institutional support on the share register with the top 20 owning uh, almost two thirds of the company. Uh, good support from the UK, uh, the US, um, uh, Asia and Australia. Uh, a little bit about the project now. So we'll, we'll kick off with Nevada because that's a, a new uh, addition to our portfolio. Uh, this is a project we've only recently um, exercised an option to take ownership of. Um, so we now have access to these two properties, the Black Canyon claims and the 4th of July claims. They occur between two existing large scale uh, active gold and silver gold operations in the North Florida Canyon mine, which is mining uh, uh, approximately uh, or producing approximately 120,000 ounces a year from an open pit and heat beach operation. Uh, and then in the south, the Rochester mine, which is producing about three and a half million ounces of silver and 30 to 40,000 ounces of gold a year. The, uh, the area is, uh, is very accessible. It's about a two and a half hour drive to the east of Reno. Uh, the interstate, the I-80 uh, interstate highway passes just to the west of the project. So access is generally very straightforward. Uh, and you can see from the uh, oblique view in the uh, bottom right of this slide that you know, we are extremely close to these existing mines. This diagram shows uh, in the foreground the Florida Canyon leach pads, in the mid-ground the actual open pit mine itself, which is mining all oxide material. And then two kilometres away in the hills, 
the Black Canyon claims, which we now have access to, uh, showing the high grade gold rich nature of uh, exposed narrow quartz veins and historic mine dumps from workings which ceased in 1927. So we've struck a deal uh, with the owners of those claims. So we now have access to the claims. We've paid uh, an intermediary party, uh, the vendor. Um, we will over the next uh, two years, a, a total outlay of $210,000 in cash and $5 million direct shares. Um, and then to the owners to keep the, uh, the deal in place, we'll pay the 2022 claim fees. We'll make that payment in September this year. And then monthly payments made from September 20 two onwards uh, and both of those claim fee payments and the monthly payments are advances against any production royalties if we get to that point. Effectively what that gives us is a mine lease agreement with the underlying owners where we have unimpeded access to the claims to undertake exploration uh, and then subject to uh, making discoveries and putting those through feasibility etc uh, and getting the necessary permits uh, we have the right to mine on those. Um, just Moving in a little bit of detail there, there's been very little work done on these claims. They've, uh, they've been owned by the same family for uh, almost 70 years. A little bit of exploration done in uh, 2006, 2007. And really what that's highlighted is a series of narrow, very high grade veins containing gold up to uh, over 3000 grams per tonne. That's, that's uh, over, a uh, sorry, over 100 ounces per tonne. Uh, that's in old mine workings and narrow veins. There's been no systematic mapping uh, and no systematic soil sampling over this project. So that's something that we intend to do with the goal of delineating areas uh, where a number of these narrow veins may coalesce to form swarms of veins that may be amenable to bulk mining. Very similar at the 4th of July claims further to the south. Uh, we have uh, state additional claims there to make that one coherent package. Uh, so both 4th of July and uh, Black Canyon have areas of approximately 11 square kilometres, so not too large to manage. So we've got people mobilising down from uh, Alaska and from Reno um, the next couple of weeks. Uh, by the end of April, we should have field work uh, underway um, with a view to doing mapping, soil sampling, and rock chip and channel sampling where appropriate, basically to determine whether we have uh, potential for bulk mining, uh, and if so, to develop draw targets for later in the year. We intend to have that work completed uh, sometime in June, uh, and then we'll move over to Alaska to do some further work on our Alaska project. So the Alaskan project's about a six hour drive out of Anchorage in South Central Alaska. Uh, Alaska is a, a great place to operate, very, uh, very mining friendly. Uh, and we're about hundred miles to the Southwest of uh, the Pogo mine, which is now owned and operated by Northern Star Resources, an Australian company. The project we have two components as previously mentioned the, the northern component here which is prospective for porphyry related mineralization including you know large-scale porphyry coppers themselves scarn deposits such as the discovery exactly um, and associated deposit types and then the southern block caribou dome which is more of a vms terrain uh, with the caribou dome deposit itself uh, we believe being a distal vms with uh, with very high grade copper so the bulk of the work in the last uh, three field seasons has been at exactly where historical drilling has now been uh, backed up with more recent drilling and converted into a jork resource. That sits on the edge of a very, very large copper anomaly, which is about 18 kilometres long, seven kilometres across, within which are several overlapping copper, gold, arsenic, um, antimony and, um, and silver anomalies. Those are sort of some of the classic pathfinder minerals for porphyries. The only other area other than Zachary that's been drilled are five holes at Saturn, which have uh, intersected hydrothermal alteration under extensive um, post-glacial cover. And at Mars, where a single drill hole there has intersected porphyry mineralization at depth. So Zachary itself, uh, the, the known resources in the Western part of the deposit uh, drilling there to a depth of uh, about 300 metres below surface and only very shallow drilling to the, uh, to the east of that. And what that drilling has shown is that there is continuous mineralisation across over three kilometres of strike length 
but it requires further drilling to put that into a resource category. So there's certainly areas uh, untested by drilling uh, over at least two kilometres of strike length below about 100 metres here, uh, and certainly below the existing resource block model. The work programme we intend to start there soon is a, uh, a programme of metallurgy. Um, that is to determine the, um, how well we can recover gold using gravity circuits here, uh, and then how the residual material from that will respond for flotation of copper. We intend to start that work programme by the end of April uh, and have that going through the, uh, the second quarter. Uh, and then the, 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 the output from that will be fed into our overall thinking for the project and determine whether we're going to undertake further drilling there this year. If we move on briefly to Caribou Dome, Caribou Dome, um, very high grades here in uh, lenses of massive sulphide. There has been some uh, early metallurgy done here about five years ago by Polarex's predecessor. Um, and the key takeaway from this is there is still uh, significant areas open for mineralization extensions of existing lenses, both at depth and a long strike, and a number of untested coincident IP and geochemical targets, which will be tested uh, potentially later this year. So we will be doing more drilling here in 2021, um, some additional holes for metallurgy test work and some additional holes to test uh, some of the extension uh, and, and new targets. And finally, the, uh, the porphyry potential. So if we move back now to the, uh, to the Northern Stellar property, uh, you can see the geochemistry here with uh, the colours in the background representing copper in soils uh, and then the, uh, the line work representing particularly moly, gold, arsenic and silver. And you can see we have these coincident anomalies at the Gemini, Jupiter uh, and Mars prospects. The only one of those drilled to date is Mars with one single drill hole. Uh, that was drilled below outcropping copper mineralization, weak copper mineralization in the top 300 meters of the hole, uh, and then a change from propolytic alteration into potassic alteration marked by gypsum and biotite, uh, and a significant uh, increase in the copper grades. So that 100 metres there averaged about 0.22% copper and 0.1 gram per tonne gold. That hole was uh, unfortunately finished in mineralisation when the rip broke down at the end of the 2019 field season. So that hole requires uh, deepening uh, and further drilling uh, in that area. And we intend to fund that uh, ideally by bringing in a partner for the uh, the porphyry work, because as uh, I think most of you are aware, you know, porphyry exploration you know, requires quite extensive expenditure over a considerable period of time. So, you know, of the order of five to $10 million a year for three to four years. And so we are seeking uh, JV partners for that. Uh, we have a number of uh, interested parties that we've executed confidentiality agreements with. Uh, they've had access to our data room. Uh, but with the current uh, travel restrictions due to COVID, we've been unable to visit site. So that's something we intend to continue pursuing uh, during the year, uh, whilst at the, uh, the same time, you know, we'll undertake those work programs outlined uh, here. Um, so including the metallurgy at uh, exactly further drilling at Caribou Dome, and obviously the, uh, the early work to delineate drill targets in Nevada. And, uh, and so we look forward to keeping you uh, fully up to date uh, over the year as those work programs unfold. So thank you for your time and I look forward to talking to you during the one-to-one uh, -one event. Thanks.